pointed out last week how, you know, it's interesting that uh, when you go back to Genesis 1, or Genesis 5, uh, 1 to 5, it talks about the generations of Adam, and it tells you how they begat sons and daughters. And verse 5 finally says he died at 930 years. And how when you start counting chapters in the Bible, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and keep going, you finally get to Matthew 1, which is the 930th chapter. So you got the old Adam that's dead and the new Adam comes on the scene. Amen? Amen. Amen. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and of course ultimately the son of man, amen, the Lord Jesus, uh, is even, you could say, the son of Adam. And uh, so it's a, a coincidence, of course, that if you start counting the first letters of the New Testament, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Jesus is the seventh uh, word, I mean. If you start counting these words, the seventh word of the New Testament is Jesus, amen? amen. So it kind of fits exactly uh, as it should with all the Bible numerics and the Bible. Lord, so, uh, so hopefully we'll get something fixed up if I had my other computer, I could show you my outline this morning, but I have to show it to you next week. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's always a challenge putting together a message with pictures that kind of help communicate the message. And uh, I think I can go that extra mile, so I do that. And uh, it really, I think, makes it easier for the kids to remember. So we're going to pick it up at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, because we left off at 17 last week. So we'll stand out of respect to the Word of God and read to the end of the chapter, beginning with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 385 times. That word in the Greek is Holy Ghost. Pneumahagion. <laughs> There's no article in front of it. But now occasionally there's an article. The Spirit of the Holy. And that's when the Bible translates it as Holy Spirit. Now what's interesting is the word Holy Spirit in the Greek is only there in the New Testament four times. I wrote them all down this morning during Sunday school because there, there were only four times in there. And um, so it's of some significance to know that you've got a Bible that's being an honest Bible because the new versions, none of them are honest. Right. And they never differentiate between Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. They're spelled different because each one connotes something different. Right. So it's interesting. She was found of, with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Mm -hmm. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Right. See, uh, Jesus mm -hmm. means, uh, Jesus means Jesus, Jehovah saves. See, Jehovah saves. That's why we sing that song. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. 
Another tremendous, Amen. beautiful word. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, again, we're so thankful for the word of God. Help us to believe it now. And in Jesus' name we ask it. And amen. 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 So have a seat there. And um, so here we see Jesus' divine birth. There were certainly some unusual events that led up to Jesus' birth. Amen. Right. And uh, we see, first of all, that his birth was of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and uh, that's a word that definitely connotes that something can be seen going on there from God, that God is somehow in the meeting. And God is doing something. He's active. We're not just speaking about the Spirit as the Spirit, as that third person of the Trinity, or the third person of the Godhead, as we like to say, amen? Yes. Since Trinity is not really a Bible word. And uh, it's interesting because God's showing up, see? And so God's very ghost, his very presence is there. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. So number one, we see his birth was of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child yeah. of the Holy Ghost. So again, you know, the old timers and the simple people could always appreciate and love God's word and love the Bible because they knew that there is a God in heaven and God, it being God, uh, he, he definitely is uh, bigger than we are and more awesome than we are and Amen. needs to be respected. Amen, brother. And no one would ever even begin to try to approach God without a gift. It's only understandable. And that God is a God that requires sacrifice. As much as we ain't got nothing, we ain't got much, but he requires it. And we see it even of these kids. Now, this is just God. God, somehow he delights in being God. And I mean, I could think of a lot easier way that God could have brought his son into the world but God brought him in the world this way. Right. And even Joseph and Mary thought this was weird. <laughs> right, right. But see, there's something you learn about God right away, and that's God usually uses the most unlikely people at the most unlikely time in the most unlikely way right. to do some great things. Because God just delights in being God. Amen. See? And so, uh, so these kids have a cross to bear. Right. Before Jesus even shows up. Right. Amen, brother. Am I going to go God's way? Well, if I do, it's a way of faith because everybody's going to laugh at us. Everybody's not going to understand us. People are going to talk about us. People are going to lie about us. Tales are going to be said about us. It's like God wants that to be so. Yes, sir. And it's a facts. Yeah. You're always going to be the laughing stock of somebody. Yeah. So who's fool are you going to be? A fool of the devil or a fool of the, fool of the Lord? A fool yeah. for God, I see. I made a choice to make a, to be a fool for God. Amen. You just let the chips fall where they will. <laughs> and that's what God requires of those that would be his truth tellers and that would hold to his truth. Amen. Because there is a cost to it and there's a real devil to it. And there's a world of the devil uh, that's fighting against you. So, wow, these kids are going to have a cost and a cross to bear. <coughs> And yet they're just trying to do the right thing. But the right thing always has a cost to pay. So now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child. So our second point is his birth created a predicament. Yeah. That's right. Joseph had a predicament. Amen. He's thinking, wait a minute, I'm 
thinking of marrying this girl, but uh oh, she's already pregnant. Right. Well, that's weird. Normally, a woman ain't pregnant till she's been with a man. So, man, I'm going to have to, I guess, go ahead and divorce her. Now, again, the fundamentalists get all excited about these verses because they're wanting to get into marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and teach all kinds of twisted, yeah. screw, screwy, goofy things uh, that they like to teach. And so his birth created a predicament. Joseph's predicament was Mary was pregnant before he married her. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now he, I'm sure he sat down and asked her, well, Mary, what's going on? And she told him. Right. Now, happily, we do have Luke chapter 1. Yeah. Yeah. And Luke really takes his time. And God bless Brother Luke. Uh, because Luke, rightfully, let's go ahead and turn over to Luke 1. Uh, he, he, he points out for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. It's like a preacher told me last night, and it's the truth. If Jesus Christ or the Apostle Paul, either one went to the average church, they'd throw him out on his ear. Yeah. Yep. What they believed and what these clowns today that they think are Christian believe, that believe me, it is two different things. Right. Even as they delivered unto them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Amen. See? Amen, Not of brothers. the message. That was the word. Amen. Amen. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. See the word Theo, that's God. Theos is God in Greek. And Philo is a name for love. Is a what? Philo is a name for love. Philo uh, Theophilus. So see, so lover of God. Amen. He's writing to somebody whose name is Theophilus. Their name is lover of God. Are you a lover of God? Amen, he wrote this to you then. Amen. Now he nails it. Now he's nailing the door closed. Verse 4. That thou mightest know the certainty. Oh, well, we're not sure when he was born. Nobody knows that. Oh, you're an idiot that's never read Luke 1. Oh, that's right. He never wrote to you. You're not a lover of God. You're just a Baptist. Amen. Or a churchgoer. Or another Catholic. Or one of the daughter whores, like the Methodists or Lutherans. Amen. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Amen, there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So very similar to Joseph and Mary... They can trace their lineage back to Judah. Zacharias, it was his turn to be the priest. He served in the course of Abiah that David set up. When before David died, he said, well, man, my son's going to come on. He's going to build the temple. God's already told me, gave me the directions. I'm giving them to him. And so let's make sure everything's set in order. And we got the tabernacle. We're getting things ready. We got all the priests. Let's get all the sons together here now and get it all up. In First Chronicles 24, verse 10, it tells you the course of Abiah. So we can know the certainty of these things. See, that's why Luke wrote his book in the Bible. And it's all significant. And so we know when Jesus was born. You got to almost be an idiot to not know when he was born because the Bible lays it out. But it's just who's a Bible believer and who's not. And people say, well, it doesn't say you. Yeah, John said you, you couldn't write enough books to contain all the things that Jesus right. did. Jesus did a lot of things. God did a lot of things. Amen, brother. But you ain't got no right to negate everything God said. Yeah. Just because your favorite preacher or teacher has got itching ears. And so he continues... Yes. 
Verse 6, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. It came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before the God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Yeah, you just read 1 Chronicles chapter 24. It tells you all about how that, yes, uh, they got the fellows together. And they explained everybody. Now you're, you're going to take your turn. You're going to spend your one week. Everybody was assigned a one week of service. And since it was 24, then it was all measured out there. So everybody would serve uh, in their course as it was laid out in chapter 24. And so, let's just look at it real quick. First Chronicles 24, verse 10. The seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abijah. So they would serve one week of service two times a year. And because of him being the eighth, then that means that he would serve in June and he would serve in the fall. Is it June? Yep. He'd serve it in, in June and he'd serve in December. Two times a year. And so, and then all were required uh, at Passover. So, it's so interesting because, again, we know when it was. He was serving his course in the temple of the Lord. Amen. His lot was to burn incense, like chapter 23 says of 1 Chronicles. When he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Amen. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the, the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple, and when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. So it took him, again, he had to do that, he had to work there that whole week. Then once he got his week of service done, now he could head for the hills where he lives, and go get and see his wife and tell her the good news and get with her so that she could conceive. And nine months later, here would come a, a bouncing boy, John the Baptist. So he departed to his own house, 24. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he, took, he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, 
to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her, and Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. So see, that he, it's the hill country. See, he's a hillbilly. And right. it took a while to get up there. Right. Amen, brother. That's why we say it would be around June 22nd when finally uh, John the Baptist would be conceived. So verse 41, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb. And, and whence is this to me that the Lord of my... My, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Right, ladies? Isn't that how you'd be? If that baby's in there kicking and jumping around when you're trying to talk. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever, and Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. So finally, March 25th or so, there's a little John the Baptist. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her, and it came to pass, so for so on. Verse 67, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, yeah. to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, 
that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. See, this is what they were looking for. That they might serve him without fear. And that's what the Jews were interested in. Well, if you're really the Messiah, does this mean now we're going to be able to serve God without fear? And you got to realize at this time they don't even have they don't even have the Holy of Holies. They don't have right. the Ark of the Covenant. Right. Oh, they probably had some little knocked together orange crate, something or other they stuck in there to have something in there. So that when they had the curtain closed, there was something in there. But it was still down there in that cave. It was still in, 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 in Jeremiah's grotto. Where Jeremiah had hidden it. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. See, now that's what Shiloh it means, peace. Because they were looking for Jesus to come. And so he's prophesying about John the Baptist. And how the Lord Jesus is coming. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel, which would be when he'd finally turned 30. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. So now we, we'll be getting into that, see. So this is a little bit what's going on, Amen. We see the setting. We see the background. Amen? So now we go back. Let's go back to Matthew 2 then get through this real quick. So we see that Joseph, he's a man of character and he has a solution to consider. Verse 19, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So Jer Joseph's character and solution was him being a righteous man. Yes, he had every right to get mean and get loud and uh, take her to court, make an example out of her. Because what in the world is his girlfriend, his fiance, doing pregnant? She's been unfaithful to him already. And they ain't even been married yet, formally. But yet, no, he's a good man, and he would never embarrass her by going to all that hollering and carrying on and making a big deal, an example out of her. He just wants to do it quietly. He wants to give her a writ of divorcement privately, privately, just hand it to her. He wants to keep it low-key. She sure kept it low-key. He's going to keep it low-key. <laughs> Amen? Because he's a good man. That's the point the Bible's making. He's a good man. You know, it's not all about him and his pride. And, you know, sure he's got that right, but he's not going to use that right. right. He's going to keep it quiet, like a righteous man would do, like a good man would do. So, first we see his birth was of the Holy Ghost. Second, the birth created a predicament. Thirdly, his birth necessitated a special revelation from God. Amen. This baby's coming. Amen? Amen? So God is going to have to kick in here and do something. Because it's an embarrassing situation. He wants to do the right thing. He wants to do the Bible thing. Amen. But leave it up to God to occasionally kick in to do something. And yet, uh, no, 
Just swallow your pride and go on, big boy. Amen? Amen. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the angel of the Lord told Joseph by special revelation in a dream. Right. Now a seer sees. Right. See, Often he sees visions. Mm -hmm. See? And he can, he can prophesy based on what he sees. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know it all, but he saw something. Right. <laughs> And here, God uses this angel to give him some assurance that number one, he's chosen for a special job and a special task. And he would be inclined to be afraid, but not to be afraid. Yeah. And though he may have to bear some public ridicule and accusations and a lot of tongues wagging, you know, telephone, television, telephone. <laughs> It's okay. See, you got to love God so much that you take that crap from a lot of people. Amen? Amen. And so the Lord gives him a special revelation. He gets a special revelation from God. And he tells him straight up, You're, Mary wasn't kidding you, son. This thing is of God, and God's in this thing. See? So to give assurance, then we say be to give uh, to guide in taking Mary to be his wife. It's okay, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. We see uh, that the revelation from God is to explaining that the child is of the Lord. And then lastly, D, we could say uh, to reveal the child's destiny. Yeah. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So his name is Jesus. And his mission is to save. Amen. And that's why the Bible teaches it from cover to cover. That Jesus is the Savior. To save mankind. Then number four, we see his birth was full men of prophecy. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled. Again, I wouldn't give you a whip stitch for a Santa Claus Jesus because he's not the one of prophecy. Right. And the beautiful snowy and Christmas tree Jesus just ain't the one of the Bible. Amen, brother. Paul clearly says people preach another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. And the biggest day of your life is the day you realize it's the truth. The Mormon Jesus is not my Jesus. The Catholic Jesus is not my Jesus. Amen. We have a different Jesus. Ours is certainly. Isn't that what Luke, the word he used? Yeah. That you could know certainly. Amen. It ain't no hope so. Maybe so. I believe in Jesus. No, no, no. I have some certainty to it. Amen. Because when he came, he came in fulfillment of the scripture. See? Yeah. To fulfill prophecy. Now all this was done that it might fulfill prophecy. So you go ahead and celebrate your Jesus. And I'll just go ahead and keep celebrating my Jesus. Okay, hey, we ain't got no problem. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Now all this was done it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the, of the Lord by the prophet. Saying behold a virgin shall be with child. So his virgin birth was predicted. In Isaiah 7, 14. Amen? Right. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us, like Isaiah 9, is going to tell you. Amen. Amen. His name's going to be wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Then number five, his birth stirred great obedience. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn 
son. Now again, all the new versions take that word firstborn out of there. They want you to question right. what God was doing there. And they want to make it somehow maybe just a young woman. She <laughs> don't necessarily have to be a virgin. See, there's certain miracles we have trouble with. And so like Andy down there in the... Uh, Stanley, Andy Stanley, he says, it's not important you even under believe anything about how he was born. Just as long as you believe he was raised from the dead. No, you're a nut job. Yeah. You need to join hands with our governor. You guys would get along great. <laughs> Have you seen that sign over there on Telegraph? <laughs> Is it Telegraph and, and, and uh, oh, Dunbar? Dunbar? Yeah, Dunbar. If you just go south... That first house, just south of that feed store, they got a beautiful sign up there, a big, beautiful blue Michigan sign, you know. It's got that be beautiful, it says on there, my governor's an idiot. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then underneath there, it's got, you know, that Michigan, and it says, uh, pure moron. Uh, oh, it's just a beautiful sign. So I definitely ordered me one. I I'm really surprised I haven't gotten it yet. I'm really hoping Dave lets me put it in the front yard. <laughs> but anyhow right here it's so awesome the, fir the word firstborn is removed from the new bibles to promote a false doctrine called the perpetual virginity of Mary which implies also the perpetual virginity of Joseph yes. and yet the bible teaches us in Mark chapter 6 that Joseph and Mary had a minimum of seven children but see, that's those of us who believe the Bible and know certain things for certainly, amen? Right. Certainly. And so, his birth stirred a great obedience. Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord told him, and so he goes and marries her. Now, one of my pictures, and I, I, I love finding this picture because I found this picture where Joseph and Mary are there, and there's the high priest, and there's friends in the background, and they're getting married. <laughs> they can go ahead and get married now. And they did. They, he immediately went and married her on the spot. Amen. See? The sooner the better. Praise the Lord. And that was an act of obedience. See? And yet, later on, when the baby's born, notice what this verse said. He called his name. He didn't say, this is going to be little Joey. No, little Joey's born later. It's in the list in Mark 6. <laughs> Joey Jr. comes along later. <laughs> But no, their firstborn son will be called by the name. Joseph made sure to tell them, and they wrote it down. Jesus. Amen. See, Joseph obeying the Lord. Amen. You can be sure he had a lot of wonders and doubts, and the devil tried to get him to fear. But he kept them fears down, because the Lord told him, fear not. And buddy, you think just marrying this girl is bringing on questions. Wait till these wise men come walking in on you. <laughs> Wait till all of a sudden you've got soldiers coming down the streets killing all the babies they can find trying to get yours. And so you get warned in the, in, in the middle of the night to get out of there. And let them goofy uh, wise men go home a different way too. Tell them not to go back the way they came. Wow, that's something cool, huh? Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word, how it kind of rings true in our hearts, being human beings like we are, thinking what it had to be for these kids, thinking what it's been for us, and thinking what we got ahead of us yet. Man, there can be some really troublesome times and difficult moments. And some real decisions have to be made, and yet we have to move forward by faith. Like Paul said, forgetting those things behind, we got to press forward. And so, Lord, thank you for your grace that it's sufficient and your mercy is true. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's